Living History Lectures presents Tams Allen. Tams Allen is the most popular speaker in the history of the Inquiring Mind series, states Washington Commission for the Humanities. Hans Allen is known for her in-depth research and lively presentational style. She kindles a thirst for history while entertaining the audiences with her knowledge and humor, says Pierce in King County Libraries. We have never had so many people turn out for a program before. What a fantastic speaker. No wonder she packs the house wherever she goes, declares the Cheney Cole Museum. Hans Allen is a performer and historical consultant. Since 1986, Hams has been touring her programs throughout the United States and Canada. To find out more about Tams Allen and her Living History Lectures, visit livinghistorylectures.com. To book now, call 253-884-9947. Living History Lectures presents Tams Allen. If I want to take a bath, I have to go jump in the river. And the rivers were very polluted and very cold. And nine times out of ten, I'm going to catch pneumonia and die. And that proves right there, if you take a bath, you're going to die, so don't do it. <laughs> now, how many of you out there know what the bubonic plague is, the Black Death? Okay, this is a plague that swept through Europe, wiped out two-thirds of Europe's population. The one thing, if you lived in the city, the one thing you prayed never happened to you is that some city official found out somebody in your house had the plague. Because then they would come and they would paint a red cross on your door. And once that cross was painted on your door, nobody, but nobody, not even a priest, would go through that door. They'd wait for the plague to pass on through, and then some city official would open the door to find out if there was anybody left alive inside. And unless you had a good storage of food, you died of starvation before you died of the plague. Anybody out there ever see a movie called Monty Python and the Holy Grail? You remember the scene where the guy comes out with the wheelbarrow? Bring out your dead. And they're putting the dead bodies in the wheelbarrow? Well, that's reality, folks. There really was a dead cart. And the person who operated that often got sick and died, and somebody else had to take over this civic duty. What a job to inherit from your parents. Mm. Now, everybody was in the habit of just opening their doors and windows and throwing all their garbage out into the street, including the contents of their chamber pot, where you sit down and go to the bathroom. Those were called their slops. But there were laws. You couldn't just open your windows and throw your slops out into the street. You had to give warning to the people in the street first. <laughs> so you open your windows and you yell, Hogs wallow! And throw your slops out. And if you happen to be in the street, you plaster yourself against the house and pray you don't get splattered with whatever's coming out the upstairs window. Hans Allen is a performer and historical consultant. Since 1986, Hams has been touring her programs throughout the United States and Canada. To find out more about Tams Allen and her Living History Lectures, visit livinghistorylectures.com. To book now, call 253-884-9947. Living History Lectures presents Tams Allen. Now 
we come to it, the instrument of torture. This is an Elizabethan corset. Now this front part here is called a busk, a B-U-S-K, and it's a carved piece of wood or a carved piece of bone, and it's tied in place with a ribbon tied into a bow. Now if you were really enamored of somebody, you would give them the ribbon from your busk, but you really got to like this guy a lot because he's going to wear this ribbon on his sleeve. This is called wearing your heart on your sleeve. Everybody's going to know it's a busk ribbon and everybody's going to know whose it is. And this ribbon tied into a bow survives today as the bow between the cups of a modern brassiere. And this is where it comes from, is holding this wood piece in place during the time of Shakespeare. This is really live hall. You should be able to hear this. You cannot feel the human body underneath this. I can bend at the knees. I can bend at the hips. But woe be it to me if I sneeze. For there is nowhere for my ribs to expand in trying to figure out what to do. Well, she had a man at her court. He was known as a bit of a rogue. The other courtiers didn't care for him very much. And he took matters in his own hands. He went and he held up these Spanish galleons, took the gold off of them, and laid them at Her Majesty's feet. Well, the queen was very pleased by this. But the Spanish ambassador was absolutely livid. And he came to the queen and he said, Your Majesty, you must do something. Your Majesty, you must do something about this rogue. Your Majesty, if you do not do something, there will be war. And Elizabeth smiled at the ambassador and said, Bring Francis Drake to me. Actually, they went to Drake on his ship, the Golden Hind. And Drake knelt before the queen, and the queen looked at him and said, The Spanish ambassador has been telling me you've been stealing this gold. And he said, Oh, no, Your Majesty. It was merely salvage. For the ship, it was sinking. Of course, he didn't tell her it was sinking from his own cannonballs. And the queen said, Hmm... I need a sword. And several courtiers offer her a sword. And the Spanish ambassador says, yes, we're finally going to get some control here. And the queen raises the sword. And Drake starts saying his prayers in earnest now. And she knights him, Sir Francis Drake, for everything he's done for England. And there was war. Hans Allen is a performer and historical consultant. Since 1986, Hams has been touring her programs throughout the United States and Canada. To find out more about Tams Allen and her Living History Lectures, visit livinghistorylectures.com. To book now, call 253-884-9947.